Robert Fires was a rebel. He roamed through the shire. And Robert Fires, the rebel, he resisted the state. He's from Illinois, and there's a rebel boy. But he packed his bag and he moved through stat with the clothes on his back and a bag and the cat, the rebel. The volunteers, rebel, Rob Mathias. The bromance continues. Much. That was beautiful. That was excellent. Thank you. Right there. <laughs> so now it's just us, and this is the Rebel Love Show. This is a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, and we are back from Pork Fest, where we are now new human beings out of this crustacean of a moth or whatever the hell that we are transformed into new human beings. Uh, you can find all of our content at uh, youtube.com uh, slash rebel love show, rebel show, love show dot com, iTunes, Stitcher, J Rev, Voluntary Virtues. Am I missing anything? That's everything. That's it. I'm Ron Mathias. And I am with that intro. I mean, Joel Valenzuela. With, and I can't get with this open. Moonshine. You can't open your own moonshine. I'll open it later. And we got a return guest, first return guest that we've ever had on the show. Yeah. The one and only uh, Shire Dude. You have another show? I don't even know. You, 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 you create <laughs> shows. You destroy them with, like, <laughs> objectivist, hardcore mentality. Oh, and then man. you come back with, like, something else. Yeah, man. The, the Shire Dude, the show, now exists. I'm very happy about that. Uh, YouTube.com slash DudeShire, because someone Dude Shire. already owned Shire Dude and then deleted their account. You probably should have figured that out before you created it. Oh, man. I was so bummed about that. You have no idea. You're Dude Shire to me from now on, boy. Oh, man. It's all backwards and upside down. Is it? Yeah. Dude. But that kind of feeds into the abstract comedy that I'm going for, so it works. Well, it is very abstract, but it's not that much, because you know what? At Pork Fest, it was taken over by Doge. Doge it, Fest. It oh, yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I went on a hunger strike for days because finally I got one vendor to take away Doge. So I actually was able to have a hot dog. So it was great. <laughs> yeah. In case the audience was There's wondering. no idea what the fuck we're talking in about. In case the audience is wondering, Dogecoin was really like nowhere <laughs> in Barkfest. No, there was two vendors that took Doge. Two vendors. That's basically nowhere. And Doge tips. There's only double as many as took Dark Coin. So let me put it this way. Did it was a joke okay on Shire Dude's count, and yeah, he, he pulled it off very well. He got Vermin Supreme to say something. He got Jeffrey, Jeffrey Tucker. Tucker. Jeffrey Tucker, Dude, man. Dude, Jeff Dog. Jeff Dog was all up on that shit. He's my buddy. He's a good guy. He's everyone's buddy. That's how he makes money. That's how he scams people out of 80, yeah. however many yeah. bucks. Oh, You're man. the one with the Liberty Me. Uh, Liberty Me is a great website. Liberty.me. Just saying. It's a... Uh, it's a great website if you want to get in contact with the big Liberty names and uh, if you want to get a blog out with really good search engine optimization. And if you want to get scammed. Nah, nah. I'm, st I'm still behind it. I think it's a great idea. Uh, well, uh, you would. You, you have to sort of ride it out. You're the only person I know using it. Nope. Mateus is too. Oh, that's right. Mateus is using it. So too. Hey, we're recording, by the way, people. <laughs> Pipe it down. Just just. You got to embrace the live studio. No, audience. I love the live studio audience. Even though they're not in the studio, they're they're chilling with. Drinks I'm gonna get over them there. with the Shire Dude cam right here. Yeah. See, why are you recording while recording? It's like yo, dog. I heard you like recording. <laughs> like, Recordception. Oh yeah. So, uh, oh, here we go, uh, Sh Mr. Shire Dude. Yeah. Now this is first. This all three of us. This is our first pork fest. Mine, Joelle's, and yours. Now both I've. We've all new movers. We all came here. We, we, we are very interesting that we all came here before Porkfest. We all made the move before Porkfest. We have all this in common. I, I think it's kind of interesting that all three of us are at this table already moved to Manchester, and we moved before. We knew we wanted to be here before we even experienced Porkfest. All right. So you're the guest. I want your opinion first. How did Porkfest, how was it for you? It exceeded every one of my expectations, and I mean that sincerely. Um, yeah, just there was there was too much going on in one, any given day. Did it exceed your sanitation expectations? <laughs> yeah, I guess they had some some problems. Uh, san it was problems. the proverbial shit storm. The free coasters got shitted out. Ooh, yeah. There you was know like what? Some, because like <laughs> what happens when you live too close to the ocean? Then these big billowing shit storms come down <laughs> off the coast, come up from Massachusetts off the Cape, right? And then they go hit the coast, and you get you're stuck in a shit storm. What can I say? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I uh, one thing that we were doing, especially me, like we we walked the beat multiple days. Like I, I felt like that's what I did for like five six days in a row. 
was unless I had like a, a speaking engagement or, or friends of mine had speaking engagements or we were doing, I was on different shows and whatnot. If I wasn't doing one of those things, all I was doing was just walking the beat where I would just pick a direction and start walking. And there was a moment, uh, it was like Monday or Tuesday, where because I, I, I have so many friends on Facebook and stuff like that, where I met so no, Nate bragging. Everyone does, man. This is a fucking liberty movement. Everyone has. No, every Andrew has like 24. How many are you yet now? 24 what? Friends. Friends? Facebook friends. Friends? Friends? So that oh. means like two friends in real life? <laughs> I have more so than that. Yeah, like man. 24 Facebook friends because you used to have a bunch, but then they all learned you got scammed on liberty.me. Oh, and so then my gosh. <laughs> in case you didn't realize, I'm going to be a dick to you about the whole <laughs> thing forever. We should have interviewed... Uh, Jeffrey Inter- Tucker. We should have an intervention. An intervention. Dude, I with saw. Jeffrey Tucker. I saw you talking to Jeff Dog there, and I was. Did I you was, grill him on using Federal Reserve notes at Pork Fest? No, no. Because I'll, you should have. But I was about to go grill him on. Be like, yo, why'd you scam my bro Andrew here? No, nah, man. You see, here's the thing: is you should be spending Federal Reserve notes because that's the incentive structure. They're losing value rapidly. You need to sell them to suckers, right? Bitcoins. That's the stuff you need to hold on to, right? That's the incentive structure. Yeah, so just like Liberty.me, we're trying to sell it off to suckers. And uh, yeah, oh, man. how's yeah. Liberty.me working out for you? Yeah, no, now on you know, hating aside, joking aside, <laughs> is it how's it, how's it going? Because I'm curious. It's because cool. I'm a cheapskate. It's cool, you know. I mean, honestly, like to be completely blunt, I haven't used it as much as I thought I would. You know, um, I don't know if I'm gonna renew. Uh, it depends on how Shire Dude does on Liberty Me. I've already actually already used it to promote Shire Dude, and so we'll see how that goes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. At any rate, back to my story. Like Monday and Tuesday, I spent like on Agora Valley, and we it was nothing but turning around and meeting people that I knew on the internet forever. Really? Because you know, I didn't turn time. around; I just walked oh, forward and ran. I would walk. Or, yeah, no, 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 whatever, man. Well, I would sometimes circle around and whatnot, but like I kept meeting people. I met like a hundred some plus people in an hour in like a five hundred foot radius, and it was like hugs and handshakes and all that craziness and it was yeah a, a, the entire time was just like that like you see these people start hanging out with them like everywhere i went it's like i can go to almost any tent anywhere in the entire rogers and hang out with people and it was everyone's like-minded and it was an experience it was except for the gg bowman tent <laughs> yeah yeah did, did we ever find out what was she spraying like she was spraying all those Bullshit. wanted, all those fucking wanted posters everywhere. Although I, I love it because for all those wanted posters, Silver Dave just took one. He started using it to sell his silver. He all puts on, "I'm Chris Cantwell, and I think you should buy Sons of Liberty Men." Yeah, and he was just going around like he was just totally using it. Like he, he that guy's all right, you know. He's a funny guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. so speaking of funny guys. Like, you're one of the few people in here who is a professional funny guy or semi-amateur, whatever you want to call it. That's your aim because I would say um, Radius, is, which is, by the way, is my new nickname for Garrett Ian because of his three-foot <laughs> hair radius. I don't know if that's going to fit. Radius, dude. And so, so Radius does other things with his life. Like, he, he hates on cops and stuff. But, like, he's funny, too. You're not funny, too. You're funny first and foremost, and then you're anything else after that. You're like a reverse Garrett Ian. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Garrity and <laughs> Garrity and Inside Out, yeah. Inside Out boy, Inside out? anyone? What does any- that even mean? Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> well, at any rate, I enjoy your shire, dude. I can't. He's kind of dressed like Garrity and right now. Look at him. A little bit, yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> he just doesn't have the hair. I yeah, I know. I never will. Are you are you going full Garrett right now? Halfway, halfway. Oh. Dude, I'm never. Anyway, Shire dude, <laughs> I love Shire dude. I love the episode you did. I always. But I can't speak for other people. I don't know if everyone will love him because some of that stuff is weird. Like you, you just like it's a bunch of Ridley in jokes, and then it's like <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean music <laughs> with the flags and shit. I love that. I just love that. But I don't get. And then you just go straight into Dogecoin, and yeah. it's like it's so it's like bad editing. But it's hilarious because <laughs> it is bad editing on purpose. Mm-hmm. But it's not like it's not obvious to a no- it's a very in jokey kind of thing. I don't know if everyone would like it, in the, even in the community. How's your response rate been on that so far? It's a lot of in jokes. I've got a lot of people reposting it and sharing it on Facebook, at least. So, I have a hope for your last episode that it lands on some sort of Doge Reddit, and there's going to be thousands of people 
you know, across the world that think Doge has taken over Pork Fest, yeah. especially like big names like Jeffrey Tucker, yeah, yeah. and Vermin Supreme. And that whatnot. was the premise behind it to actually be a little serious and and see if anyone really thought that this is actually happening. You know, oh, because well. nothing about that video suggests that that's a, it's a joke. Yeah, right. I loved Vermin's bit. Yeah, I just loved it. You saw Vermin's bit, right? Yeah, no, I saw it. Yeah, just Vermin's a great guy. His one of the funnest parts was uh, during a group photo where he was the one hurting the cats. Yes. And he was using all of his campaign uh, rhetoric mm-hmm. for it. That, that, was, that was really cool. He's good at propaganda. Oh, yeah. He is good at making a big angry crowd a big not as angry crowd. But sure. you know what was weird? He was hitting people up for money, like campaign contributions and things, so he could get matching federal funds, like a serious candidate. Yeah. And it's like, dude, I love you, bro. I ain't paying shit for that. Because, like, you're, you're just... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about that because I'm actually helping Vermin collect those funds. Now, uh, see, dude, first you're, you're, you're on the Vermin payroll. I, dude, I'm not getting paid, but I'm helping him out. Okay. No. You're, he's, he's you're, my buddy. okay, Andrew, your uh, Porkfest nickname might have been Planet of the Apes because <laughs> <laughs> your <laughs> grunt stuff, just like Rob's nickname was Stumbling Drunk, <laughs> but because <laughs> he was sort of Stumbling Drunk, but your new name. But your new nickname is Scammy Twice. Whoa. Because first, you got Jeff Dog scamming you. Now you got Vermin scamming you. People are scamming you right and left, man. Are, are What's they up scamming with that? me, Jeff though? Jeff Dog scammed him? No, Je- Jeffrey Tucker. Oh. That Jeff Dog. Yeah, but I mean, you, you have had to too many fucking Jeff Dogs, man. You, you need to come <laughs> up with more nick- less nicknames or more. <laughs> you Maybe. Have to, you have to ask yourself, are they scamming me or, or am I scamming them into being in my video, right? Because they were both in my video and it's taken off. Has it? It's it's getting there. <laughs> Let me put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the biggest laughs we had. But let me put it this way: once you have recouped your investment, yeah, how much have you donated to Vermin Supreme? Uh, so far, zero dollars. But actually, I was planning on doing a matching funds thing where I donate up to the maximum limit, two hundred fifty dollars. You should only donate Doge to Vermin. Two hundred fifty Doge. I will set up a Doge wallet for him if if that's how I need to get the money. That's the only way you should do it. <laughs> how about can you give him Obama coin? Yeah, will he take Obama coin? I'm almost certain he will accept Obama coin. Let me put it this way: Why don't we create our own cryptocurrency just for him? Call it Boot Coin. <laughs> 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 like have this match just like this boot. <laughs> just glue quarters to boots. And but, then, but then the Canadians would think we were competing with their Aboot coin. Oh. And then, you know, who knows where we go from there. Oh, my gosh. So I think this podcast has kind of gone off the rails a little it bit. It started off off the Way rails. Way off the rails. <laughs> this is probably our worst podcast Isn't this, yet. Isn't this why you guys asked me back? Because it just goes completely off the rails. It goes to shit. Yeah. Just like Porkfest facilities did. Oh, yeah, man. that was... <sighs> okay, let me... On a serious note. Yeah. There were some facility issues. Thank God we were is, at a hotel. Which, let me put it this way, that's why it was in a nice hotel. That's why I don't usually go to festivals, because that amount of humanity in an outdoor setting is just too much for whatever sh- facilities. It just it was a literal shitstorm. So I didn't mind that. I think Parkfest, c- all things considered, that it was like an anarchist camping festival, yeah. was very well organized, very well put off, was a smashing success. And I I'm think organizers did a I'm great job I'm upset that fest. so many people are bitching about everything. Ooh, this one teenager even, was rude to oh. me, man, and it's the Porkfest the, organizer's fault. <laughs> I think know. Rogers did it a little bit. They could have done a better job cleaning some things like the facilities and stuff like that and the pl- like some of the restrooms being out over way too long. But that had nothing to do with the Porkfest organizers. The organizers of Porkfest did a great job, in my opinion. And they're my friends. Yeah, exactly. So... Anyways, I want to give a special shout out while we're in here because uh, Shem Dog is in, a, in is in the house. Yeah, can you can you like lean your head to where Mateus's head is right now, yeah. just so people can see you? That is there he Shem. is, one of the the proprietors of the one and only Satoshi Saloon, which was the coolest place to hang out in all of Pork Fest. I'll just call I'm calling oh, it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. That, that was that was our home base of operations. I very much appreciate it. It was it was fantastical to be. To, to go there and hang out. I would say fantastic. Fantastic. A fantastical yeah. world? No. It know. is now. Yeah. Yeah. Shire Dude just proclaimed it. You yeah. know, in <laughs> fact, I'm coining, I'm coining the word Shire Dude. Oh. <laughs> there, <laughs> there is some great footage of us in Satoshi Saloon that you I, posted, and I'm glad you posted it because dude, it looks There's great. the battle. That video, of that, that video with uh, Shake It Up Baby with uh, Lauren Rumpler was. Twist and Now, mind show. you, 
the we were both intoxicated show. during that. Yeah, and you, you can really see. Is it? It's like the camera was not me, but we you can see it in your eyes, and you're like, oh. "That's when the color started, man." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was actually like it was pouring down rain, and it, it seemed very impromptu. It just like, you know, wonderful anarchy. It's just like natural no. order just like uh, happened. In fact, dare I uh, dare I say it was wondrous. Wondrous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let me put it this way. Uh, did Porkfest really change anything for you? Oh, absolutely. What? Um, well, in, in case you haven't already uh, understood from our kind of like double speak here, I did take some, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, Intoxicants? S- some some uh, special substances. Some special there you go. Psychedel- psychedelic substances. <laughs> let, me put th- let me put it this way, how best I can. At some point, I had to leave a note on the door. <laughs> yeah, with the with the three the four words, Shire dude tripping, knock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all you need to hear. That like yeah, that that says enough. The yeah. trip back was fun. Oh right. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, at one point, Rob like saved me. I, yeah. I don't know if you want to. Tell I had that to story. leave a radio show to do that. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> I was on radio Dude, I, to do. I that. had to leave a young lady's side who really wanted to get it on for you. Yeah. So we, we're bromance and a half all up in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's possibly the best room at Porkfest was our room. Oh, it was because, yeah. like, Davi was there at, like, 3, a, 4 a.m. Yeah, man. Just, Davi like, chilling, him. talking about stuff, talking about the days when he used to do all this stuff before he was Muslim. That was a really good one when he was talking. I miss that. He was, yeah, because you were stumbling drunk. I know. That well, night, it's too. It's Porkfest, man. What do you want me to do? Dude, I, I ingested more booze than you did by far. Yeah, well, first off, But you I'm can a veteran in, with my yeah, skinny yeah, you constitution can, here and... You can drink anyone under the table. I have. I a, have literally I'm a drunk cheap date. Russians under the table. Yes. Plural. So I don't when I want to. But people around here see me a little bit sloshed. Just not like. Argh. I don't think I've ever seen you that any like crazy drunk before. I'm sort of like Riaz. I can, I can be like w- way too much and just still be keeping that appearance uh-huh. until I hit the point where I'm like about to puke and I'm just then you start to see it a lot. Have you ever puked? From drinking, yeah. twice in my life. Really, I've never been hungover, which is weird, though. That is weird. But See, it, it I might happen soon. If I, I, I had a huge hangover once during pork fest. I know. The other day I didn't. It, it was, was after you're doing the stumbling drunk that one night. And <sighs> do you have to keep using the word stumbling drunk? Yes, it's hilarious. And dude, stop fucking filming, dude. Jesus the Christ, <laughs> they're already on camera. There's cameras everywhere. <laughs> what the fuck, man. It's the Shire. Uh, dude. No, you yeah, can keep man. recording. No, don't, don't, don't turn it off because of me. Because I'm the one that always. No, please keep turn it off because of fucking me. I'm actually keeping it on, trained on Joel for most of this podcast. Yeah, because you don't Dude. like me. I understand. But it's aimed right at my nips. I mean, it's, that's kind of weird. It's mostly his erratic hand motions that are attract the uh, the camera. Like this? Yeah, like what is that? Like that's that's going to be a bumper for like Dude, you know half of my shows from Last tomorrow. night, Mark Warden <laughs> pinched my nipple. Just throwing that out there. I he don't know. pinched what, your nipple? When did, what? I had <laughs> a... <laughs> I don't even want to say truth, what kind of conversation told. I had with Mark Warden yesterday. At the new movers party, it was interesting. That guy's such a cool guy. He man. is awesome. Yeah, they, like I love that, that guy. guy. He is so cool. Like he he's he is the coolest state rep there ever was. Like, until uh, Shem becomes a uh, <laughs> yeah yeah. Until well, Emily Sandblade is pretty cool Not too. Only, no, she is. Yeah, she goes cop blocking. She's legit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, yeah. There's there's stuff that she's talking to me about that I'm not even bringing up on the show. But she's a uh, she's a funny person. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. So here's we need to get her on at one point. So here's the thing, um, did Rob? Now I'm interviewing yes. you. Interview you, me. I, I like being interviewed. I like people showing attention to me. Interview me, baby. Interview me, baby. Okay. What did Parkfest change for you? It re it re uh, energized me, where it gave me uh, hope of the future. Um, being around so many like-minded people. Hear you Shire do with your lap, your notepad rustling. Are you taking notes, man? No, actually, I this have is copyrighted. Notes. I have n- I have notes of like stuff that I want to talk about. <laughs> oh on the show. no, no shit! No, okay, you're coming prepared now, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not prepared. Uh, unlike when you were prepared for our show look, at look, Pork Fest when you were supposed to be there to record. Oh yeah. Yeah, you were late. Yeah. I'm calling you out on that shit. Yeah, no, I, I sleep late, man. I, late? I, it was at noon. The crack of noon. <laughs> no, twelve thirty. Hey, I wake up at the crack of noon sometimes too. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, 
pro- how pro quest changed me. Like it's um, I never felt like I was in such a loving place before. It was like the best week of my life. I think there's a bunch of um, young ladies you might have insulted by saying that just now. What being you've never been such a loving place before? Like no, <laughs> my, no, you know what I mean by that. I'm saying being around so many people that think the way I do and want to change the world. I'm just a number to you. Yeah, I get. It. Well, let me put it this way: Porkfest changed very little for me because I've been in this for so long. But what it did do is it re-energized me. You listen to this shit that he says. He always has to like one up something, and he always has to like, oh yeah, you know, I'm so I'm so fucking hardcore. Nothing ever affects me. Yeah, I'm Joel. I've been in this shit forever. Yeah, I know. I run this shit. So, yeah, it was. Let me put this. Uh, let, let me examine it. One thing it changed for me is it changed. I had fun. I had a lot of fun. And I had fun the whole week. It changed. What it really changed is I had great convers. I had so many fantastic conversations with so many people. It, like I had, I had emotional connections to like a lot of different people. Let me put it this way: it changed something that I already sort of knew in theory, which was that we're all human. Because that's the thing about Porkfest; it's a professional event. And there was all these professional people going around, and it's like, but well, they go into the campground; they're just normal human beings. Yeah, like the big gay dance party was the life changer. All right, I'll be honest because it was one. Well, it was fun and it was gay, but it was also so many s- in uninhibited straight people. There was like so many s- people that I were so like respected in the community, etc. Yeah, what yeah. the fuck, man? Anyway, I'm trying to talk here. I'm trying to open up. Are you uncomfortable on camera? I guess not. When, when, when my, when my headlights doing, are blaring you can't right be here. Doing what we do if you're uncomfortable. Anyway, on camera. so gotta roll with the punches, man. So here's the thing. Uh, there was a. It was like one of the most like w- let loose kind of moments there was, and there was all these respected, professional, great people there who were just you saw them in a different light completely, and that was crazy. Like, you know, Mark Warden with like like pink weird like mask on and like feathers all over and he's such like, a respectable state rep and then Emily Sandblade popped in there for a while it was kind of crazy and then like a few okay so like it's one of those places where you can be partying with some girl who's practically in her underwear and then it's like yeah you're having fun and her parents are right there with you with you with her all like yeah woo and like the dad has lipstick on and everything and they're just like it's the weirdest shit in the world, but it's like so humanizing. It's like now you don't see any. There's no. It knocks down the barriers between you. It's now. It's just like we're all people. Where none of us are above looking a little bit silly or having a good time, and it's just a beautiful thing. Because, and I'll be honest, I think it'd be really awkward with my parents for a long time if ever they saw like video or footage or anything of me there. They would never set foot in the place, and they'd never be just like shaking it with me. Like, Mm -hmm. that to me is a beautiful thing where it's just, it's just pure non-judgmental fun. And that's the beauty, that's the beauty of Porkfest is it's fucking insane. Any weirdness, that's what liberty is all about, is it's weird, it's insane, it's crazy, and everyone's different. Some people are, are different in ways that sometimes may not necessarily be a good thing, but guess what? We don't care because we all know we're a little bit weird in our own way, and we're all here together in the same part. It's like a beautiful community of full-on difference, and yeah. it's just it's just great. I love it. That's that's what changed my life right there. That's one thing, like just walking around Porkfest in general, talking to so many people that like you know celebritarians or whatever you want to call them or whatnot. Like being in this community, everyone is like, especially living here. You you get this whole sense like everyone is just. A human being doesn't matter if they're like a millionaire or whatnot. Like I was sitting, there was this thing. It's this uh, this Satoshi Saloon where I'm sitting across from Jeff Berwick, who I'm not a fan of. But uh, you don't have to say that on camera. No. Yeah, I can already did. I'm, I don't, I don't say you, I don't say don't. I say you don't have to. Well, I'm not. I don't know. He rubbed me the wrong way. But at any rate, I didn't like, know he rubbed you at all. No, he didn't. That's why he rubbed me the wrong way. I want him to rub me a little. Spend some of those millions Dude, of dollars around. If if you've been so desperate. <laughs> If you had been so desperate for a handy, I could have helped you out. I could have, like, had Andrew, like, help you out because clearly <laughs> he's totally <laughs> down with the whole, you know. I only accept Dogecoin for that service, by the way. <laughs> yeah, dude, you forgot to bring your shower dick, yo. That was, <laughs> that was a big faux pas right there. 
But yeah, the Satoshi Saloon was where you got to just hang out with whoever. Oh yeah, there were so many people in there that like the who's who would always come in, but it was always just comfortable. Were you there when Vermin Supreme was in there? Yes, I had a conversation with him. And he told his uh, his story about when he was on. um, Oh, what show was it? It was some daytime TV thing. Oh man. Oh man. He told this story about like Operation. It was called Operation Media Fuck, and how he went on with this big group of people who were like they were like some like cannibal group. Oh, you got to ask him about it. If you're ever hanging out with Vermin Supreme, I mean, I wish someone got the story on film because it was... And, oh, Carla was there for it, too. Carla heard. Okay. Which Carla? G or M? M. The cool Carla. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Carla. Shem's Carla. Yeah. The cool the Car- one. The Carla that's going to change the world. Or who already has. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, by the way, I didn't get to try your food I did. at all. That's because you're a loser. Not once. I felt a little, uh, put, a little put off. I don't know. I, I you know to what? Try it, it was good. If you go to, you get to have bacon pancakes. Man, those bacon pancakes were fantastic. Dude, one of these days, I'm just gonna make some here, and you're just gonna be no. Awake. I'm going. I'm going Atkins uh, payday. I can't have pancakes. Yeah. You know what? I gotta get in shape, especially after pork. You're fest. going to Atkins, really? Yeah. No, really. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go back to Atkins for one month. When is this? Because I'm gonna go full soilent. So. Well, we gotta do it at the same time and see yeah. who does better. Yeah. Totally yeah. down for that. Yeah. We'll, gonna... we'll, we'll judge which which is better. No carbs or like weird <laughs> genetically enhanced like goo. Magic so, science. Yeah. Thing. We'll yeah. see which one works better. Well, guess what? I'm going full pancake. <laughs> You're gonna go. Full <laughs> 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 well, I'll race you to the finish. I bet you I'll beat you. What do you have to lose? This much. Oh, you know, a little bit. because you know what? I want to be able to... Here's the thing. I was talking to Silver Dave, who runs this... Does he like to be called Silver Dave? Yes, that's what he goes by. He's Dave someone or other. Do you like to be called Shire Dude? Do you want people to consider you... Can I just call you Dude? If or do you, do you prefer Shire Dude? Or Shire his Dude, dude Arino, uh, you or know, if you will? Shire D for short. Shire D. Yeah. The creamy Shire D. <laughs> Speaking of which... Michael, creamy D was there, yeah. Michael W. Dean, yeah. he already knows this, but I'm going to go even more creamy public D. with it. He's the creamy D from now on. Oh, yeah. We have to refer so, to him as creamy D. If, he, he, helps. He, he put the creamy D in us, and we got to we gotta inject the creamy D into other people. <laughs> I had multiple conversations with other podcasters where I felt like I was injecting them with the creamy D. <laughs> I, hey. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? Like, you've seen those, like... <laughs> You've seen those ads. Wait, wait, sorry, do you want some, you want some uh, creamy D? I can spread it to you too. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it spreads on thick. Is you know? Thunder Dave Thunder D now? Is that? No. It's gonna be a thing. No. He's. Well, here's the oh, thing. I don't care. Here's the thing. So, creamy radio audio by Michael W. Dean. He's Great really. Blog. He's helped us a lot with the audio here on the Rebel Love Show. So the creamy D is definitely in us. He 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 imparted a lot of cream. <laughs> and so we're we're definitely trying to spread the cream around as much as we can, hopefully directly orally. Orally. Yeah, because it's all this is we're we're doing like we're spreading the creaminess orally right now. You know what I'm saying? We're not like this isn't we're not like farting to the microphone. This is all like oral right now. Creamyradioaudio.com. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I just yeah. love these like crazy jokes to come up with. And nicknames, but so he's the creamy D from now on. Well, he has nicknames for people too on his show. Dude, who else has like. What was Ian's nickname? That was a really good one. So something ferret. Oh, I forget. I wonder if this will get picked up and people will go on his show and start calling him Creamy D. The Creamy D. I hope that happens. Well, I already got Derek J to call him the Creamy D, so that's good. Good. Now, um, so Ian. He's probably listening to this and he's like, what the fuck is going on? Ian Freeman is obviously the prophet, peace be upon him. Yes. But uh, he's the prophet. Uh, what's his name? Garrett is radius because of his three foot radius. This guy over here is um, Planet of the Apes because I don't get that. Because uh, huh? here's the thing: the Saturday. I, I like <laughs> I like your interpretation. He's just me, just like shrunken down a little. Just yeah, squished. because you know they look sort of the same, same glasses, same hair color, but like he's like. a podcast <laughs> they're not gonna know what we're doing <laughs> okay so <laughs> anyway saturday night the saturday before pork fest this guy did an all-nighter party because what the fuck apparently he didn't know what was going to happen at pork fest so 
He's all like strung out. Okay, no, no, no. We were supposed to leave at when in the morning? Like I don't know. Five. He wanted. To, I have no idea. I I regret leaving that early. Yeah, we should have left at like one. It. Yeah. Or like one p.m. or t- or noon or something like that. We get to Porkfest at like eight a.m. on the day that everyone's setting up, so there's like no food available. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. We got to like get the lay of the land before it got all busy. I I do like that we were there early though. Yes. To be honest. Despite your bitching, just so, a little too early. I no. just pulled an all nighter and I was like, um, I was like an eight. I was just kind of like stumbling around. Like, well, oh. well, look at this guy for a second. So he's got like a full beard and hair. It's like a one helmet kind of thing, right? And it's sort of like it's growing in a little bit. It's not just like a nice little nice little mustache and then a beard. It's like a little, you know, like apes have like fur around their face and they have that little cute little face in the center, the fleshy face. So he sort of looked like that. And then he was just strung out as hell. And so we stopped for a second. We're walking on some trail. He's just going around like, mm, like just sort of like walking like that. And I'm like. So Andrew and he goes, <laughs> at me like that, like he, <laughs> exactly and so he's playing to the apes from now on, just like this guy's stumbling drunk because he was stumbling drunk. Yeah, that's how. I would, that's why I don't normally drink. No, but you're you're funny special when occasions. Drink. I know I'm hilarious when I'm drinking. Yeah, I, I just mean, that complete, I I also complete. stumble. I, no, I'm complete when I smoke. Yeah, I know. We make this joke because he doesn't have a sense of humor, but when he's like high or drunk, he has a great sense of humor. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And so yeah. I. You know, yeah. I like to try to keep it a little bit more professional than other people. Yeah, no, I, I I'm not I, a wake and bake dude, person. I've been like professional for twelve years, brah. I'm like, is, I'm it, is this your Carla? No, I can do a better Carla than that. Either Carla. Okay. Both Anywho, at the same time. Oh. Okay. Anywho, are you, are you drinking moonshine with with coffee? No, this is wine. It's what is it? Carla. Oh, Rossi? that's the wine. Carla yeah. Rossi. Yeah. That's what, I got stu- that's what I got stumbling drunk on. Exactly. Yeah. It was like all over the Satoshi Saloon all the time. Thanks, Sham. And so he just passed on the savings. So he jumped his car on the last day. He's like, dude, you can just like have the rest of the booze, I guess. <laughs> so I just sort of <laughs> collected it all and started his film on him again because I don't know what the fuck. Man. I get to deal with it. He's, he's, so, a, he's a Garrity in Manchester. He's going to do what he's going to do, man. Just we, can, we can't stop him. Just don't develop a radius. That's all I ask. No, I think he, need, he needs a look. I don't like his look. Can we talk about this? Can but we talk what, about your man, style, your look? Yeah, Here's Rob the thing, was like ragging on I me. I wasn't ragging on you. I'm <sighs> just saying, like, look, everyone has, like, a look, all right? Like, everyone in the Liberty community, like, everyone has, like, this weird, odd, you know, this look of theirs. I, I'm trying to narrow mine down. Mine's evolving. I won't lie. My my complete can't Pirates completely change. Block, that's a good look. Uh, it was, with your hey. with your holster. Yeah, hey, it's pork fest, man. Come on, I was having fun. It was pork fest. Dude, I was open carrying this baby right here, <laughs> right with a uh-huh. uh, with a instrument on my back. And yeah, like, that's your look. And a, like a bottle of moonshine right there, and it was just like going around pork fest like that. Like again, again, hey, I know what I'm doing. Professional. So again. The whole, I don't know, you know, for the viewers at home, who noticed at the beginning of the show we looked all weird, especially I did with all my getup, is the whole never go full pork fest thing. Pork fest is the one place. I'm, hey, I'm wearing this because Drew Phillips gave it to me and he said you can have it only if you have the balls to wear it. So that's why I'm wearing it. it. Yeah. Inside. So edgy. It's not, it's on, it's on the, I'm, I'm spreading my consciousness around the world via cameras. All yeah, like 100 viewers. Yeah, like because cops down <laughs> in the street can totally like sense the shirt's presence. Presence and precedent, and anyway, so Shire dudes. Look, that's is, what we were talking about. This we is no. Want to talk about, we're we talking talk about going full pork fest. Full pork fest. The thing is, people all like like to open carry. And they like to wear Pedro shiny badges. Was open carrying, they like God. to wear pa- shiny badges. They like to wear things like that. And when they go to pork fest, that's when they just go all out. Yeah, like they don't have yeah. one badge. Like twelve buttons all over the place. They have their. St- their sidearm, their bayonet, and their AR on their back, and they're just running around happy as a clam. They're running around in a kilt and a broadsword. They're running around with just nothing but a pit bull and a loincloth on. They're just, they're just. Wasn't uh, Mark, um, Mark Edge walking around with a kilt and broadsword? Yeah, that was a that was a reference right there. Yeah, yeah. And so then there's like Shire dude wearing his normal shit, which is kind of disappointing. But hey, yeah. This guy was being pirates of cop block with his like shirt all open and this like bandana on, going around videotaping people to take their clothes off, you know, to show with tattoos. Dude, but you didn't go to the dance party, so you didn't have like the full effect. I guess. Next year, you won't ditch out on any of the parties. We're gonna be at all of them. We're gonna rock all of them. We're gonna run it. We're gonna run that shit. Oh yeah. 
We're going to run the Tinder panel. I heard that uh, Shade Stroke, the band, have you heard of them? I, I, oh, yeah. I've heard of them. They were going to be on up and coming band. Next where, year. You know, they, they've already got this huge fan following, and they haven't released a goddamn song yet. Right. That's insane. I know. It's, like, it's, they're it's, super underground. Like, I haven't even yeah. heard one song from them. That That's the thing. It's, like, so underground that you'll, you'll meet the guy who knows one of their songs who's like, oh, dude, I heard Whiskey Dictator, man. It was awesome. And then that guy's going to be the coolest dude at the party. Right. And it's like, go share, share the song. And he's like, nah, man, I can't find it anywhere. I just heard it once. It's right. nowhere. It's so exclusive. It's so underground. It's like I heard a, a bum in an alley whistling it in a little bit. And <laughs> what? He <laughs> just becomes the coolest guy at the party all of a sudden. Yeah, mm-hmm. even though, but the thing is, they don't recognize it, so he has yeah. to tell them, yeah. But no, you guys like ragging on my clothes. And no, my I wasn't ragging on them. You guys, no. don't lump me into this shit. I'm not just judgmental. <laughs> I fuck said it this one time. Is. You there. people. I said it yeah. one time, so you got good. Right. And I came, I came back look? with a retort, which I think is okay. Like, as if I have money for clothes, like, I'll buy well, if, clothes. Well, if you had, what would you buy? What would you look? What, what would you look like? I don't know, man. Uh, like, I might do, like, like button-up we, shirts or, like. Okay, let me put this way. Full disclosure. This is probably the first time someone's seen me in a t-shirt. You know, very long time. You know why? Full disclosure. I have been the fashion coach to no less than oh three God. free state men, the last of which being this guy. So if this guy has a look, it's because I formed this look. Wow. So yeah. one of these dudes, I mean, again, no homo, but if you want to go to the mall and get some clo- clothes shopping. He likes shopping. He likes clothes shopping. Yeah, you know why? Because as an artist... You're, I like you're an artiste. as an artiste, I enjoy bringing out the best and most beautiful well, in I'm, people. I'm just gonna say right now to any of your viewers who want to help me with my clothing, uh, you can you can go right right here, donate to this Bitcoin address, and uh, <laughs> oh, you got it. There we go. Yeah, donate right there, and uh, and I'll go buy as many uh, clothing articles as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh, no one will even get that reference. Yeah, I know. But it's, <laughs> hey, you gotta get on the Snapchat. Snapchat yeah. me. My handle is Desert Links, and I'll, you'll get that. Oh yeah, Snapchat me. My handle is Andrew Meatloaf. V Rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're gonna get a million like crazy snaps after this. Yeah. No, you won't. What the fuck. <laughs> no one young enough to use Snapchat. It's listening this. to this show. You talk to people, you know, some people in the community that are slightly older, like, what's Tinder? What's what's Snapchat? Oh what no, is Tinder's this? a shit. Next year we're gonna have a Tinder panel. It's I gonna know. be balls deep. Definitely, yeah. I'll be on that panel. I'm gonna be balls. Have deep. you been using Tinder? A little bit, man. Like oh. you know. Nah, you gotta get on that shit, man. I'm having. You know what you should use as your profile picture on Tinder? Mm-hmm. The one where you're on Peace News now, and it's a black and white photo. Oh, I took of like, you, and you're like, Yeah, because yeah, you look yeah. cool as fuck. Do <laughs> that. Use that, man. <laughs> that was a silly one. No, but seriously, I I'm matched with this girl on Tinder, and I've been talking to her. She likes freaking. And Gary Johnson, and I was talking to him, dude, I blog for free, oh my gosh, and then it's like, I have this like date set up for Sunday where I'm like, I'm going to buy you a beer with Bitcoin, she's like, what, and it's wow. like, I actually found someone on Tinder who thinks that shit's cool, so wow. like, like, what's the odds of that? Uh, you know what I'm saying, you just got to throw yourself out there and go for Is it. Is she a local or a free wow. stater? She's a local. Oh shit. That's you know back when I did uh, Liberty on the Rocks in Orange County, Cali- uh, Orange County, California. Um, Shout out to your buddy Rob. Yeah, Rob Freebeard. Yeah, man. I'm, you know I Dude, didn't know you no, knew him, man. Listen, yeah. he's the one that he uh, he's the guy behind Agora Geek. He designed the uh, Voluntarist Rebel uh, logo for my yeah. YouTube channel. Like, no, I but, paid hey, him hey, in hey. Bitcoin, I, and I didn't know that you two actually knew each other. Hey, I'm calling him out. He's a fraud. His n- he is not a free. He's his He's not beard, a beard was was clearly braided. <laughs> it was it was enslaved. His beard was not oh, free. Man. So I'm calling him out. Oh. Whoa, enslaved Actually, beard. I want to start enslaved a enslaved beard record, yeah. right there. I'm calling you out, buddy. <laughs> Call it slave beard. <laughs> slave beard. <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, he actually, it was actually his idea to market Liberty on the Rocks to women over OkCupid, the Whoa. dating website. And it, it works. Work? Really? We actually got, I think, at least one person. Wow, one. That, <laughs> that's a success in my book, man. Oh, yeah. In the Liberty movement, that's yeah. kind of not too bad. Yeah, she was like the school stoner chick, and she just started hanging out with us from the OkCupid, you know, people just putting up their profiles and saying, hey, I go to this meetup every week. You know, come hang out with me. There you go. Right. And it's, you know. Well, when are you going to start Liberty Rocks uh, in Manchester? I'm tempted. Get, get the locals involved. Mark. Um, It'll be like a Liberty on the Rocks the Shire or at least a Liberty on the Rocks Manch Vegas. I haven't decided. And it's going to have to be somewhere cool in the coast. Oh, I don't know about the coast, man. That's a little far from me. I don't know, man. Yeah. Okay. We've been all goofy for a long time. Yeah. A little bit of a serious thing going on. This week New is Hampshire Independence. Independence Day week. 
and we are going to do a statewide project, five locations. Though we got yeah, we'll figure out the weather. The, the weather issues might schedule. be affecting some of those. We'll yeah. still make it. So we're going to put everyone on notice that the federal government does not represent the best witches of the people of New Hampshire, and that we are remembering that this Independence Day because we declared independence here in what New Hampshire be six months before any other colony. All right, and so we're still free spirited. We're still not red or blue. We don't buy that bullshit. We're here to be free, and they're messing with our vibe, so we're just going to kind of put them on notice all around the state. Very civil, very non-confrontational. All we're just saying is, hey, look, we love, we're a free and independent people and state. For all the lovers of liberty out there, what better way to celebrate Independence Day than to go out to people at Fourth of July parades and festivals and fireworks shows and talk about independence? Whether it's new, we're going to do New Hampshire independence, but if you're living in a different state, like imagine going and talking about actual independence on an Independence Day. Like there's a far, off, there's people in a far off land known as Washington D.C. that are, you know that are doing tyranny on us that is a hundredfold worse than the colonists faced. And there's Garrett Ian Jr. there just like when we're trying to have a serious moment here he's just like filming everything off camera and i'm gonna punch this guy but it's gonna be huge we're gonna get a lot hopefully we get a lot of uh, participants with that um i we got a bunch of literature to hand out which is really professional quality foundation for new hampshire independence it's going to i don't know if it's ever been done in new hampshire honestly i have no idea if something like this has been done on a scale that we're trying to do i'm and sure someone in the youtube comments will be more than happy i'm sure to someone put it in. yeah but here's the thing we're trying to do, accomplish great things around the state. We like to have a good time. We like to... If you're not having fun doing it, why are you doing exactly. it? Exactly. So we, we have a blast. I'm having at, a blast but, doing it. But here's this. the thing. We at the Rebel Love Show, <laughs> we like <laughs> as much... We like to have a good time if you show what life's like here. But guess what? When we talk about showing the love of the liberated world, is isn't just talking about it here. We walk to walk it's going around. out and doing it and then coming back and talking about it. So we're going to go out and do something really cool this week. Yeah, and yeah. what I want to see is a good showing in Nashua and Portsmouth yes. and Keene. And then Keene, uh, actually, better get the. Hopefully, they, they deliver. They'll, yeah, they'll, they'll do deliver. I have true. Now, the Lakes let me, Region let me, Porks. Well, let, me put I, this way. Little... let me put it this way. The Keene X will deliver something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what they deliver no, they'll, is they'll up deliver for grabs. Good. But they'll deliver something, uh, whether it be. Chalking or Did filming. Did you see James got arrested today? I saw. Man, that sucks, man. I had like a He's really out. Oh, he's out already? Yeah, he's oh. talking. Congratulations, you're free. I don't know. Okay, so... I saw, I saw you got arrested. That's all I saw. That was like this morning. Things happen, you know what I'm saying? It's happens just, fast, It apparently. is what it is. And uh, that's the thing is... Well, we got to do... That's the weird thing about this whole movement is... Especially here, people don't tend... Even the most professional people tend to know how to have a good time because they're not quite as uptight about things as other people. But as much as we like to have a good time and show the fun and the awesomeness that is here, I was already having a good time wherever I was before. I didn't come here to have a good time. I came here to work. And my life work is freeing this state, right? And I'll have fun in between just so I don't go completely insane. But I'm here to work. I'm here because back in 2008, as I keep on telling every time, and he rolls his eyes every time, I made a promise that wherever the front lines of liberty were, that's where I'd be. You love repeating yourself, and I do the same thing, too. Well, you know why? Because I do it, too. Because people have to hear it, like, no, seven times before they remember. You. No, no. I, I'm I, on, like, I what, have the same three line, or four? Man. I have the same line. Like, I, I go where I didn't come here to, hi to hide. I came here to do something. You know, I don't care. They can come get me. Like, you know, I got, I, I did a whole talk on, like, you know, telling your story and all that jazz. Yeah. And someone asked, like, aren't you afraid of the feds coming at you because you're being so public? I'm like, No. I, ha I have not. a line like that actually. I say, I always say, um, out of all my friends, you're definitely one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere with that. <laughs> this is why this guy is the comedian right here. But yeah, that's that's the thing is, unfortunately, and we've had we had a couple of guests from Russia. One of them being Yuri, when Yuri, who's kind of a local now, but he is a refugee from Russia for political reasons, and Vera Kichinova who is a big-time activist. She She's awesome. And here's the thing. And I, one thing I like, because I'm internationally traveled, I've been to places that aren't free. And when we say America isn't free, it, compared to some things, it sort of is. Yeah. And that's the thing is here, it's like, man, I'm sitting on a cop car, man, not letting you go anywhere, man. Arrest me, man, and send me to this keen spiritual retreat center, man. That That's like one thing. Again, not to disparage the prophet, peace be upon him. 
but <laughs> we got that on camera too. So not to disparage that, but there's people in other countries who, if you do something like that, you can disappear. Like you just don't. Yeah. It's not just that they find you, they imprison you, they put you away for wherever, or even execute well, they you. Well, they They don't do even tell here. you. To, they don't even tell your family that you're gone. You just you just disappear, and then you're never heard from again. And everyone kind of knows that you ran afoul of the authorities, and you are dead, and no one can knows where your body is. And I know there was a uh, one fellow um, who remain nameless at the moment who has been planning, who came to Forkfest, had his mind blown, and wants to go back wants to go back to his native Latin American country and do some cop locking activities. And I'm like, dude, you got to be you got to be careful. You can't and do it by yourself. You yeah, gotta you got to have, have a crew, crew with yeah. you because even yeah. here you can't you shouldn't be doing cop locking by yourself. You should never do any kind of cop lock by yourself. It, and uh, that's and not even just cop blocking, but just filming some cops. Not even saying you can't do that. Ugh. Not even any of that stuff. Just filming them, and it's a serious risk. Like it's a risk of this is your only time you've ever done you ever do this, and that's that's it. Your, your last time. Yeah. And so that's one thing I remember when we were fighting for liberty here in the United States of America, is how good we have it, how easy our fight is, and it's not easy. I mean, we got a long uphill battle ahead of us, but some people. It just, instead of, whoa, I don't know, man, Facebook posts, you're a little bit too public, you could have some issues. No, if your Facebook posts could lend you dead, and I know... They when, can come get me. When you saw, when you filmed uh, Miss Kishinova, it's, yeah, yeah, I that know. was, uh, that could, that, there's a reason um, she, she reacted differently, I, because I she has a different reality than we do. Yeah, I, and I, I'm well aware. Exactly. Yeah. But anywho, um, yeah, pork fest, man. Yeah, pork like, fest, I man. Love, I love pork. We're fest. gonna have to have like a round two. You know what is crazy? Like also, like people don't. I, I spent so much time talking to people that um, whenever I, whenever I go anywhere, especially like the vendors, I always turn around. And if there's someone in line, I introduce myself and say, and I'll ask, "Hey, have you ever seen a Bitcoin transaction in person?" And I would show them my wallet and I would do it. But I would always tell them like this: this is what life is like here. You know, and it's literally like, it's literally like coming, you know, we had the new movers party on Tuesday. Okay. And it was literally like coming home from pork fest to pork fest, you know? Yeah. Like there's like what, 50, 60 people there or whatnot. And it was literally, we, I literally felt like I left pork fest and I came home to pork fest. Yeah. You know, it was awesome. Just how many people came with us. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't see you since pork fest, but now you're all here. And it's like, I, that, that's never happened. I've never been to a conference in D.C. And then, like, when I used to work there, right, in the political machine there. And then the next week, a bunch of these conference goers from out of state just live here now. That's never happened. That's only here. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. No, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Like, I've only been here since January, and I've witnessed, I don't know, I've met so many people that have already moved. Like, it's, it seems like a couple dozen every month, you know. And it's just, it, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in a couple of years where thousands and thousands more people still move on top of that. Exactly. Well, we have our work cut out for us, and it's, I mean, movers and shakers in the movement, we bear most of the brunt, but really everyone has to do something because this, this You know, not everyone has to do what we do. Like, if you're coming here, I just, my, my little pet peeve is always ask, I don't always ask, but I always... I kind of look at people like, what do you do for the community? It doesn't have to be like what we do. It can be if you're adding something to it, or you're, you're you're taking care of some. You're doing a business that helps other free staters, or you're helping them get jobs, or you know, you're whatever it might be. Something, you know, you came here to do something. What are you doing? Although we deserve a big sell five because uh, of that message that Ian sent us earlier today on Facebook. About Manch Raw. Dude, Free Manchester Raw is now a feature on Freekeen.com. Yeah, and I started that. Yeah, yeah. man. I'm yeah. so happy. I want to build Manch Raw up to where it's the same thing as uh, um, what, what's what's their free, eight, uh, free Man Raw. I yeah. want it to be the same as that channel. And I want okay. continual content. We're going to eclipse them. And have multiple you know. activists uploading raw footage. I've been posting all over Facebook that we have over 150 pork fist videos already on YouTube.com slash Man Whoa. Raw. Yeah. That is huge. There's like, some great content, and then there's some, like, Random stuff that has no relevance. Yeah. You know, it's not even stock footage yeah. for like a documentary. It's just like pretty much nothing at all. I'll use well, it hey, somehow. It's, well, it's I, all I fun. hope uh, both uh, Bo Davis and then uh, uh, J Rev crew use uh, some of that content. And the Shire dude, yeah. Well, and 
Well, you're making a documentary now? Well, I, I put all, all sorts of stuff, you know, like it's, it's really Well, anyone good. can use that content. Yeah. I mean, I would like you to know. have some recognition that you use my video that I filmed. But other than that, like go to town, like make video mm-hmm. content. Well, you know, <laughs> this is my last – We'll give our last thoughts, right? I'll go first because we're getting close to yeah, time. Yeah, it's ten minutes, and, and we don't have air in here, and it feels yeah, like a hundred degrees. That's why I'm, I'm wearing less. Balls. That's why I'm wearing less than usual, is because it's kind of hot in here, and I'm not helping. Anyway, so and I was yet you're wearing a, a hoodie. What is wrong with you? It's the style, man. It's I the know. Style. You it's need to change style. your style. But that's anyway. what I'm saying. It's actually not just a hoodie. It's Rogers a Lancaster, Cam- New Hampshire. Oh, wow. oh, okay, never mind. That's okay. Rogers Campground hoodie. So your I'm, sins are absolved, my child. I've gone full port fest. Hey, That's we started that out. Honest. Anyway, <laughs> I was I been, was talking to some local who grew up in New Hampshire a lot, and just you know we're just having a lot of conversations over the last couple of weeks. And she's all, I tell her about you know can- candidly about what I'm doing around here, and she keeps on saying, "Wow, you're intense, you're hardcore, you're crazy, you're like all this kind of stuff." But you're doing so much, or you know, and I'm like, you know what, you're right because I, on a personal level. On a personal level, I've been to hell and back again, and I've. This is this is my life choice right here. My life. It's not like it's I'm a gonna, lifestyle choice. It's not. I'm going to dabble in liberty activism. This is my dying wish. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life right here. I'm I'm all in. This is just yeah. what I am. I'm going to be. I'm going until I can't go anymore. And of course, I'm hardcore. And some people just don't get it. It's like. Well, I know you like that, but don't you have a life? I'm like, I do too, but I'm always working too. Like, I'm always on this because this is what I care most about on planet Earth. This is my life goal. I have one shot at life. I better take it. I better make the best out of it. No, I completely agree. Like, for me, like, I, I think anyone that comes here to please do something. Um, but you do have to have a balance. Like, I, I, I learned uh, quite quickly that I don't want to uh, burn myself out. I've seen other people... Uh, previous movers do a bunch of stuff and then they end up getting burnt out where they don't do anything. And I'd like to interject that it's not so much the whole burnout thing has it doesn't have so much to do with um, going too strong. It has more to do with not being in the right frame of mind before you go there. Not yeah. knowing what you're getting into. I know what I'm getting into here. I know but it's going to be hard. You still have to have something to live for, man. This, like, yes. you know, you can't, like, for me, like, I've been trying hey, to hey, have, you know what I, I have, have my own side life with this as well, you know? Do you know what I live for? This right here. It's my girl. That's your girl? <laughs> <laughs> that was just for you, Andrew. Oh, man. That's going to be a great edit on the Shire Dude, the next episode that I do. What about you? What's your what's your closing thoughts <laughs> on being closing here? Closing thoughts, man? Yeah, you're, you're closing out the show, man. So the floor is yours. Dude, this is, this is just the beginning. Right? Is it? Like this pork fest, all it's taught me no, is this is like, just going to end tomorrow, man. We're all just going to go back to where we came from <laughs> and go watch TV. Dude, as soon as I got home from pork fest, you know what I saw? Everyone's making plans for next pork fest. <laughs> that is amazing. That's right? special. So, obviously, it's this is this is where it's happening. If you're not here yet, what the hell, man? Like get here. You know, um, can can I actually read a little bit, uh, like closing statement you, from you from notes? the Gospel of Shire, dude? <laughs> from my notes? trip, like uh, from the Gospel of uh, dude. Is this is this during the intoxicants? This is like this is during those? my psychedelics, and okay. I, I read this to you guys earlier, but I think the audience will really appreciate it. Let me put it. this way: I have one condition, yeah, because I have camera control slash I am, yeah. If you whatever you read, you must conclude with a part about Ian Freeman. Will you do that for me? That's the Ian Freeman one that I wanted okay, to read. Okay, there we go. That's, that's okay. all I need to know. <clears throat> okay, all cameras on you, boy. The third episode of Shire Dude is the same as the fourth, fifth, whatever. Get here. Porkfest. The media room at Porkfest. The roof of the mouth of Ian Freeman at the media room at Porkfest. And that's, well, that's what I wrote down, you know, when I was tripping. So, obviously, that tells you something. All right, you it can... Tells me something, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, so, we're broke activists. Donate. All right, Bitcoin, not Doge, please. Well, whatever. I'll is. take either. <laughs> I'll take whatever. I'll take fucking copper. No, I, I I will not take Doge. <laughs> I'll I take you. Know. Okay, Donate. We're on. What we already told them we were on. Well, uh, well, I'm gonna redo oh, it. Uh, anyways, I, I want to give a big shout out to the J Rub folks for having us on and stuff. I have one of you guys' shirts I was gonna wear on the sh- on the show, but I spilled coffee on it. And I didn't wash it, so here we go. Just splicing some footage. I did a confessional for their uh, documentary. <laughs> I hope I. Uh, <laughs> I ended it. I I had a great line, so I'm gonna end the show with this. Go for um, it. Um, 
Horkfest is like the family reunion where you meet everyone for the first time. Ooh. That's how I ended my confessional. Ooh. That's, That's l- good. It's yeah. lame. No, I thought it was good. It's, it's <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyways, you can find all of our content at We're on j We're on Voluntary Virtues. You're on iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, go check out the Mantra, youtube.com slash Mantra. Me, Andrew, Joel, and a couple other people. We throw up content whenever we're doing something. And I like to get more content of like what life is like, not just like you know activism, but like, you know, just I don't know, just what, what we do. That's what the like, desert like, links is all about. Yeah, and you can always find all of Desert Link's stuff over here, Volunteers Rebel here, Shire Dude over there. Everyone has a handle in these parts nowadays. Right. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, look for our content on New Hampshire Independence coming out uh, soon. It's going Once to be we do epic. it, we're going to have some video f- uh, blogging, some photos. Hopefully, uh, we make a splash with some of that. All right. Anyway, we're out. Love, moonshine, and peace. 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 peace.